Welcome to the Heavy Spoilers Show, I'm your host Paul aka Dickhead Grayson and we have a whole host of new Batman images to talk about that have been popping up online all week. Throughout this video we're going to be going through all the new picks and discussing our thoughts and theories on them. There might be some spoilers here so if you don't want anything ruined then I recommend that you turn off now. Make sure you subscribe to the channel for videos like this every day and drop a thumbs up yeah cause, cause you're a good guy. Now with that out of the way, thank you for clicking this. Let's get into the breakdown. Okay, so there's pretty much three things being shot at the same time right now in Liverpool, England. This includes the exterior of the courthouse, the bike chase, and also a Batman glider scene that we'll talk about in just a bit. I'm guessing that after production was shut down due to COVID, they didn't want to lose any time at all, and thus they've made sure they can make as much of the movie as possible in as short a space of time as they can. Movies do tend to overlap when shooting, but to have all this going on at once is a pretty big feat for anyone who's running the schedule on these things, so props to the creative team for getting so much done so quickly. Now the first image we need to talk about is related to the bike chase between Batman and Selina Kyle, presumably after she's just stolen something from the mayor's office. When the stunt double was walking around, eagle-eyed fans noticed what looked like a gun on the side of the flying scouse mouse's leg. However, Liverpool fans need to calm down, calm down, because this is most likely the grapnel gun that we saw the character using in the trailer. I'm, I'm sorry for doing that played out Liverpool joke by the way, you, you know I love you. Now you might remember that we actually theorised that Batman's grappling gun would be made out of a modified handgun and this seems to lean heavily into that. This is because we also saw that he had bullet clip pouches on his belt and shout outs to Big Bat Theory for going over this with us as it looks like it could indeed be correct. From what we've seen of the chase scene, everyone's falling over themselves to get a shot of it and it looks like it's going to be one of the big action set pieces of the movie so I'm really really hyped for it. Cut to the funeral scene and we have what seems to be Bruce Wayne confronting the penguin over something. We have theorised that he will be running for mayor in light of the X1's death and obviously this spells doom for Bruce as it will lead to more corruption in the city that he's trying to clean up. Clearly Bruce isn't thinking of the ramifications of confronting a mob boss like this in broad daylight and I think this is because he hasn't really created his persona yet. You might remember that Bruce did a similar thing to Falcone in Batman Begins and this was pretty much the meeting that sparked up the idea he had to go and build his secret identity as the Batman. Now speaking of Falcone, we got a lot of shots of him, Selina Kyle and what could also be a new cast member in the family. Now in the long Halloween which this movie is reportedly based upon, it turned out that Selina was searching for the identity of her father and she had suspicions that this was actually Falcone. The character ended up getting her own spin-off book called When in Rome in which she went looking for clues to this and found it to be true. However, it appears that the movie is skipping that part and there has been some reports stating that she's already well aware that she is Falcone's daughter and will be secretly working against him. Kind of getting a lot of Huntress vibes from this storyline and Mystery of the Batwoman which does have similar plot elements in it. On top of this, I think Selina looks absolutely fantastic and it's such a brilliant recreation of her look in the long Halloween. Shoutouts to Batman Curated on Twitter for putting this collage together and you can really see how everything lines up side by side to show that they are paying respect to the source material. I know you already know that because of the design of the Batsuit, but I think they're just completely nailing everything here. Battens and Batman also made a great set of side by side images that show how much attention to detail everything has and we can really see that they've got it down pat in Sun. Now Falcone and Penguin I think will be bitter rivals in this movie and though the latter doesn't really feature too much in the long Halloween, the former does and he pretty much runs the city. His family and friends are taken out one by one by a killer known as Holiday who's revealed at the end of the book to be his son Alberto Falcone. You might remember that Gil Perez Abraham was cast in the film and as of now we don't know who he is completely but I do think that he will be the infamous mob boss's son. I think it would be brilliant if both Carmine's children were working against him but I don't know if they'll have time to bring Alberto in with just how packed everything currently is. Now at the courthouse we've also spotted members of what's being called the Riddler Gang. The internet is currently going back and forth over whether they're working with him or not. Personally, I don't really think they are. I think the movie will likely do something similar to Joker and have people in the city inspired by what they see as a vigilante and that they will start to don similar attire to him in order to show that they're just sick of how corrupt Gotham is. They even put up some 
some lovely signs saying our day of judgement, along with lies lies lies, which of course ties back to the no more lies thing that was written on the mayor's face above the tape. Now I can't verify this, but according to Yas Infinite, who said they were at the scene, the gang was shouting law and order, which I, I tell you if Batman's bloody gone woke I'll kill him. Again, we can't verify this for definite, but with everything that's going on, it does make sense that they would try and jam something in like that, just to add a bit more social commentary to the movie. At the scene, we also got hints that there might be other villains operating in the city. If you cast our mind back to our previous coverage, you might recall that we theorised that Barry Keoghan was actually playing the Mad Hatter, and his casting as Stanley Merkel was a bit of a ruse to throw us off the scent. Now whether or not this is true, it does look like there's another villain operating in Gotham that we haven't actually had confirmed yet. At the set there were Gotham health warnings put up to stop people from taking something known as drops. Now this could be a number of villains from the Scarecrow to the Joker or Mad Hatter himself. I know the latter tends to use hats to control people, but if you recall in our theory breakdown video, Big Bat Theory stated that they thought he might just be a drug pusher. It could be possible that Merkel, due to his ability to get access to the evidence room in the police station, is taking things like Joker's toxin and then selling them off at street level under the guise the Mad Hatter. Again, this is all just theorising, but it would be a brilliant way to bring the villain in, whilst also hinting at the larger universe such as the Joker and Scarecrow. It looks like we aren't the only people diving into Batman's stuff either, as at the liver building, onlookers caught a glimpse of a stunt double wearing a glider costume while standing on the edge of it. Now, as we know, this Batman is very DIY, so it does make sense that he wouldn't actually have the glide function built into his cape and would instead don a suit or something like this should he need to get into a specific sealed off area. Unfortunately, I couldn't find any footage of the character actually gliding, but I'm guessing this will be another big scene in the film similar to the one in The Dark Knight. Again, Batman curated put together a brilliant side-by-side -side image of this moment that I think really captures just how much effort the production team are putting in to make sure everything is right and true to the source material. And finally, I was searching for towers and locations for the film and came across this from BCEU, which after researching further, I believe could be true. In the tweet, the account says that they believe Chicago's Tribune Tower will become Wayne Tower in the movie. I've actually heard a lot of theories floating around about this, and though I can't confirm it yet, I have a pretty strong feeling that it might well be. If this theory is correct, then I can see this sort of being a penthouse setup similar to what Bruce had in The Dark Knight, and who knows, they may even connect the gliding from the liver building to this in order to make one seamless shot. We've seen with the funeral scene how the exterior of the courthouse looks nothing like the interior of the cathedral, but with a bit of movie magic, they brought it all together. I know they're meant to be filming in Chicago this weekend, so hopefully we get some confirmation of the series, so you guys can say, you son of a bitch, you did it again. And, and by did it again, I mean the first rumour that I've ever gotten right. Now obviously I'd love to hear your thoughts on this video, and if you enjoyed it, you should probably be hitting that thumbs up button right now. What, what do you mean you've already done it? Wow, you're, you're, the, you're the real hero Gotham deserves. Now, but we appreciate it, and if you want something else to watch, then make sure you check out our breakdown of the prior images outside the courthouse, which are going to be linked at the end. Don't forget, we're also giving away three copies of the Marvel Phase 1 box set, and all you have to do to be on the chance of winning is like the video, make sure you subscribe with notifications on, and drop a comment below. The winner is going to be chosen at random on the 30th of October, so make sure you get involved. If you want to support the channel and get to see content early, then please consider clicking the join button below. You can also come chat us on a Discord server linked in the description or at Heavy Spoilers on Twitter. Thanks for making it until the end of the video. You've been the best. I've been Paul, and I'll see you next time. Take care. Peace. Peace.